on the move. We are here to say that our brother Delbert Africa moved on June 15, 2020. He was at home surrounded by his family. But what we want people to know is that what happened to Delbert was just another example of George Floyd. Delbert was deliberately, methodically calculated to be murdered by prison officials as part of a plan from the government to kill as many movements as they could get their hands on. The prison officials did a lot of horrific, wrong things to Delbert, and we know that he suffered because of that. When he came out here to these doctors or hospitals on the street, they even said that the prisons did a lot of wrong things to Delbert, and they couldn't understand why. But move people know why. We know why, and the people know why. They wanted to kill Delbert. They didn't want Delbert to come out here and be strong. And we're saying that what happened to Delbert is no different than what is being done by the police to a host of black men and women all across America today. On the move. On the move. Could you say your name, please? My name is Janine Africa. Janine Dillon. Could you spell? J-A-N-I-N-E. And your relationship with? Delbert was my brother. Only brother in the organization. And when I sat there and I watched him pass over, something that didn't have to be. Because when we went into those prisons, John Africa made us help and we went into those prisons. And it's because of the mistreatment and the different things that this government had to prison do to move people, why a lot of our family died, just like they did Phil Africa and Merle Africa. They killed Delbert the same way. Those, our brothers and sisters were healthy. They went out to the hospital one day, and Merle Africa never came back. Phil Africa went out one day came back and two days later he died and the prison officials all they could say was the death was under suspicious circumstances mm. but we know what was the cause of their death they removed people and they want to kill more people and may 13th was an example to show you just how desperate they are to kill them now, now what prison was the name sci dallas sci dallas and that's yeah, because uh, when Delbert first started complaining about problems, we had to get people rallied on the internet, Facebook, everywhere to put pressure on them prisoners to give Del treatment. And when they did to just appease people, they mistreated them. They gave him medicine he shouldn't have had. They waited a long time to give him medicine. And like I said, when he got out here, the doctors in these hospitals out here were appalled at the things that was done in Delta. My name is Yvonne Orell. Del Africa was my father. I will say that I stand with my own family and that um, I want to ask questions rather than give a statement. And in 2018, when my father first exhibited symptoms that there might be something wrong, he waited six months before they would let him go to the infirmary. In 2019, when he went into the hospital, they tested and tested and tested. We waited three months between August 8th, ironically. August 8th, 2019, we did not get any results until November 17th. Lab tests come back in three days. I'll repeat it. August 8th, all the way through to November 17th was when we finally got his test results from the lab. From November 17th all the way until he got out, I begged the prison doctors, 
I've been with the hospital officials to start him on his treatment plan. What Janine is referring to as the treatment he received was hormonal treatment, which is not the treatment he needed. And it's not something to abate the illness that he developed. After he was released, and I thank Mama for that, when he went to see the doctors, again, I second what Janine said, they were in shock that he had never once received even a consultation on what to do with his health. I will say that we have had other family members that had the same type of disease that he had, and all of them are still here with us. All. Had my father received the treatment he needed, the healthy, strong, smiling, humorous, sarcastic man that I called my father would still be here today. By the time everything was diagnosed, it was a bit too late. Had he gotten the treatment that he needed for an 18-month period, 18 months, 18 months of me traveling back and forth from Chicago, 18 months of letter writing, of thanking, of asking officials, and finally getting the prison officials to turn it around and start some form of treatment. That's a long time to go without something. This warrior king is a supreme being. This warrior king is someone who taught the world how to learn how to love and to know how to have pride within themselves and to understand what the system really does to us. What we are seeing with what happened with George Floyd is just a bunch of anarchy behind countless others that have been nameless and those that we do know their names. Unfortunately, we also know the name of Rayshar Book. Why? Why do we know that name after George Floyd? The teachings of John Africa are prominent in my life. I stand here also as the daughter of a high-ranking officer of the Illinois Black Panther Party. I came into this world culture solid. I will stand on his memory. I will stand on the pride that's instilled in me. And I will stand to dispel and disband the racism within this society today until the end of my days. On those ashes, I shall. Okay. Just one question. Uh, what was the disease and what was the cause of death? Cause of death is murder. All right. All right. Yes. Disease is uh, something that was not necessary. Disease is when you're not given medication that you need to help keep functioning and your kidneys start failing. Disease is when you develop an illness that was previously unknown or undetected as what is on his paperwork. And then all of a sudden it's this or it's that. So disease is unnamed. Because his disease was being a strong black man as far as I'm concerned. That's right. When our sister Myrna passed on, moved on, and we tried to find out the cause of her death. They said natural causes. Mm -hmm. Merle was a young woman, healthy as I don't know what, running every day, you know, but they said natural causes. If Merle had been home with her family, with John Africa, she'd have been able to get her diet, exercise like she needed to and wanted to, and she would not have moved on in prison. Uh, I just want to say, Delbert had a daughter in that house, May 13th, that was killed by the bombing. Can you say your name? Can you say your name? Ramona Africa. And if you could spell it for us. Huh? If you could just spell it, spell it as well. R-A-M-O-N-A, -A, Africa, we can see. Thank you. Fuck <laughs> We are here because of the love of our brother Delbert Africa. And we cannot stay, stop saying, we love our brother Delbert. We are a family, a unit. We're not just a name or a group of people. We are united as one because of our founder, John Africa. Okay. It hurts us. It hurts us that 
We have to be out here speaking about this. But it's necessary. We have feelings. We are alive. We are sensitive. Thanks to Moon's founder, John Africa. As was said, Durham, Durham was murdered. It was attempted murder on August 8th, 1978, if you see him in his picture, and those vicious, brutal, sadistic cops tried to kill him when he came out the house on August 8th. They stomped in his chest. They shot him. They beat him. They kicked him. And by the whole entire world, when they didn't succeed on August 8th, 1978, when Dumbo was released or while he was in prison, they made sure that they did whatever they tried to do in an attempt to finish him off because he was a strong, loyal, moved soldier. That's why Delbert is not here with us today, as we know. But Delbert is still here alive with all of us because he is one with the MOVE organization. Long live John Africa. Long live John Africa. Can we have your name, please? My name is Kasawal Africa. Can you spell it, please? C-O-N-S-U-E-W-E-L-L-A. I just want to point out that all our brothers and sisters that was murdered killed in jail. The thing that people don't realize is that they went to jail, they was innocent. They was innocent of every so-called crime that, that they accused our family. They came in our house in August of 78 to try to murder all our men, women, and children and our animals. On May 13th, what they felt like they did, and did not accomplish it, on uh, August 8th, they murdered all our family members in the house. And Delbert had a daughter. Janine had a daughter. Janet, uh, she had a son. Janet had a daughter. Consuela had two daughters in that house, May 13th, that were murdered. And the thing is that Phil, Merle, Chucky, Delbert, they were all innocent, as well as uh, Janine, Eddie, Janet, and Consuela. And so is um, Merle. But they overlooked that because if they had came, if we had went to them, the way they came at us, every last one of us would have been murdered or put on death row or killed years and years ago. But despite our innocence, our people are home now. The move now. Wilson Goods, the police commissioner, the fire commissioner, all of them, not one of them even, were even questioned on murder charges. And Wilson Goods made the statement that he would do it again just the day after May 13th, after looking at all the evidence and everything they did to our house on May 13th. And this is the kind of injustice that we pushing and keep fighting and speaking out against. This is the stuff that you see now, the demonstrations all over the world. That's why our brother Mumia has been accused of killing the cops, just like my brothers and sisters here. But they ended up doing 40 years. 40 years. And then they had the children murdered on top of that, despite the innocence. With this, I just want to say on the move, I just want to thank everybody that came out here, all the supporters and everyone. And we appreciate and love every last one of y'all, just like y'all love and appreciate us. On the move, long as y'all have. My name is Carlos Africa. C-A-R-L-O-S. On the move, everybody. Thank you for coming out today. We want everybody to realize exactly what's going on here, exactly how long MOVE has been around telling y'all about the teaching of John Africa and all the brutality, all the insanity that was in this system and what they will do to try and stop you. All right, this was almost 50 years ago. And look, today that example is so prevalent everywhere in Atlanta. In L.A., in Washington, every place you look, all you see is this brutality coming from the cops. And people are not taking it anymore. The example that was set by MOVE and others by standing up against this system and taking a position is come to fruition, y'all. Right. People know that this system and this government will not support you, will not protect you. They will kill you and keep on going. And because they don't care. Right. We 
told y'all this a long time ago, and it's proven. It's been proven every day. See, these police, these officials, these administrators are seeing the demonstration of the power of the people. They're seeing and feeling the solidarity of the people, and this is what we need. This is what MOVE has been saying for a long time. This is what MOVE has been doing for a long time. Every, time, every generation you see here, this is the coordination of John Africa. This sh should be the coordination of the world because we need freedom. We need peace. And in order to get it, we've got to stick together to get it, like people are doing these days. People are fed up with this. I mean, how much more can you take? Brothers being shot in the back, sisters being killed, babies being murdered at the hands of this insane system because they feel like they can get away with it. But now they feel some pressure on them, they start to like uh, step back a little bit because the power is in the people, all right? And people have got to understand that. And we have to do our work to show these people that we are not just gonna stand by and allow this to happen. We are not gonna stand by. You know, they came with this reconciliation last month, Boots and Good, Rendell, they wanted to move to accept an apology from them. We not accepted nothing from them. Can they bring our children back? Can they bring our comrades, our freedom fighters back that have been killed by the system? No, they can't. They want to do something. They're saying they're just. They're saying they're fair. We don't want no money from them. We don't want a museum or a parade. Bring them me a home. Bring them me a home. Show how just you are. How fair you say you are. They only doing that because they have pressure on them. You know, and we're saying the lives of our babies, of our brothers and sisters is not in vain. We will never stop fighting against this system. Never. On the move. On the move. On the move. Long live John Africa. All these murders that have been happening to our young black men as to date, it's not a coincidence. It's not just something that just happened. It happened because when May 13th, 1985 happened, when they brought the bomb on my family, murdered my daughters, my family members, the news media, nobody did a damn thing about it. And it is now some 35 years later, after May 13th, you hear about all these black men that are being murdered by the cops, that are being brutally attacked. I just heard on the news today about two black men that were hung. And they try to say it was suicide. Bullshit. Bullshit. They were murdered. And like I said, this is a result of nothing being done about what happened to my family on May 13th, 1985, when they dropped that bomb and murdered my family. That's right. People, wake the hell up! Wake up, wake up and get up! Wake up and realize we have got the power and we have got to put an end to this. On the move and long live John Africa! Long live John Africa! On the move, y'all. I just want to point out that on August 8th, 1978, nine of my family members went to jail for the alleged murder of one cop, one police officer. May 13th of 1985, when the government murdered 11 of our family members, nobody went to jail except me for seven years. They didn't arrest not one cop involved in the murder of our family. That shows you clearly how they feel about black people and how they will protect their cops. How they will protect their cops, that's right. That's so the right. last uh, few questions I want to ask. Uh, we're standing here, we're close together. I appreciate those that have on their masks. One of you might be prone to step on another person's toe. You apologize for that. 
You don't apologize for murdering eleven men, women, and children. You don't apologize for people trying to get out of the house and you shoot them back. Or shooting so much to the point where the firefighters can't even put them out that we're trying because they're in fear of losing their own lives. You apologize when you bump into somebody. You don't apologize when you blow up an entire block. I'm going to circle back. 69, I was born. I happened to be born in Canada because my mom was Minister of Culture and Defense for the Illinois Black Panther Party, and there were threats of being arrested. I came into this life with just me and my mom. No hospital, no nothing. I came into this life where three months later, Fred Hampton was murdered. We escaped from Canada. We couldn't go back to Chicago, which is how my father ended up here, and thankfully got introduced to his move family, and then yet, it is beatings and murders and beatings and murders. You don't apologize for stomping a baby out of somebody's arm. So when you live a life, man, I am 50 years old, highly educated and well-read, know that. When you do this to a people that you call animals, that you call savages, and I know very well that none of us are standing here, none of our children that are around us, none of us are standing here looking like savages. You offer an apology. And you have begging from a daughter who is so loved by her father. I guarantee you that. Begging to give him some treatment yes, and you yes, refuse yes, it yes. because you're not quite sure if that's the best possibility for him. You have a daughter who 47 times out of the 41 and three quarters of the years that my father served, I was denied to visit. Why? I don't have the right birth certificate. Or then they'll say, go get your social security card. So I go into the next village to get the social security card and come back and they say, oh, you need your birth certificate to match with your, with your ID. It has been nothing but systemic racism from the time that I was born. And it was there before I was born. You have a clown for a president that wants to hold a rally in Tulsa in the very place where they raised, just like they raised the property on 1978, the entire town. Because we had wealth. Burned us. So I'm not interested in anything looking like a condolence statement from any of those people that had anything to do with killing my entire family over the course of years on both sides of my family. I have no interest in that. And thankfully, as a self-employed, educated black woman, when the torch has been passed, you better watch out. I'm coming. I'm Africa Minister of Confrontation for the Move Organization. And I want to say, have black lives ever mattered? And uh, when evidence is clear, on August 8, 1978, a black judge, Calvin Wilson, said that house was not to be torn down. When they went in there, raided, beat, maimed, snatched our sisters, took our babies out by the arms, hanging them up like this, and, uh, and destroyed the evidence. When my sister Janine Africa baby was murdered by this government in 1976, they said that because the baby wasn't there, was still in court, and it wasn't reported, and the uh, um, people came and seen it, but they denied the evidence of the baby because the baby wasn't there. And uh, in 19... Didn't have a birth certificate. Right, right. In 1978, when they destroyed the home, and uh, they destroyed the evidence, and uh, just like the baby wasn't there, the evidence they destroyed, but my family went to jail after a black, a black judge by the name of Calvin Wilson stated very clearly that that house wasn't to be torn down and that was before the evidence. Do black lives ever matter? Hmm. Do black lives matter? No. And on when, on May 13th, 1985, Judge Lynn Abraham and on wrote a court order for them to come into our home on Osage 
at murder, man kill everyone in the house except Ramona and Birdie. Destroyed all the evidence with every black life there. The black lives of the neighbors didn't matter. And uh, what we're saying is, when we saw in 1978, that was a result of our family being fed up with the beatings, the maims, and the killings. Because long before there was a, uh, Janine's baby was killed, there were other babies in the that was beat out of our women's bellies. Babies were born with black and blue marks on them. And, uh, you know, and it's been consistently that. May, uh, May 20th of 1977, when Move took that defensive stand, is a result of the beatings, the maiming, and the killing. There was no one who was standing up and saying what they were doing was wrong. So Move took the only stance that they could, and that was to come out against this government. And come out with the, against this government, Move got all our political prisoners released from prison. Not one shot fired. Not one shot fired. Because Move don't believe in murdering them killing. The people who put our family in jail are the murderers and the killers. And it's proven to be that way. But yet and still, my sisters and brothers did 40 and 42 years and 41 years in prison. Black lives ever matter? No, they don't. And uh, but what we're saying is the example of the MOVE organization to never give up, to consistently stand. There's a lot of people that's standing around here now wasn't even born. And some of your mothers wasn't even born when MOVE took that stand, not just for the MOVE organization, but MOVE took that stand for every man, woman, and child, regardless of color, because the fight was about the air, the water, the soil. When I first met MOVE and they was talking about the air, the water, and the soil, that didn't mean shit to me. It didn't mean nothing to me. And then I got to understand the importance of what it was that MOVE was saying in dealing with the air, the water, and the soil. And then, as I was understanding and started speaking out against what I had been speaking about, what I learned, I became a victim. Beaten. Beaten, um, thrown in jail, thrown out of jail, became as MOVE MOVE was. What I'm saying is, the consistency of this movement right now must never stop. When you say never give up, that's a reality in Move's life because here you see people from 1978 and before who have been beaten, bombs dropped on them, beaten. I mean, they took a contingent of cops. This beating was so horrible. With Move inside the prison on December 3rd, 1981, that the prison guards got on the phone and called in on the Mary Mason show. My sister Ramona was there to try to break Move, to try to kill Move, but it didn't happen. Move still to this day is saying the exact same thing that Move has said. There was a demonstration last week. I'll show you about this media. There was a demonstration last week. There was so many people out there. And uh, I mean, it, to me, it was up in the thousands. And we look at the news. We look at the news to see what happened. These were people who was in support of me. These were people who wanted to do more. Nowhere in the media did you see the arrows, sh the shots from the air showing the crowd. You gotta ask yourself why. When every demonstration in Philadelphia that day, they showed air shots. What they didn't want to show was the consistent power of John Africa. I'm saying there were demonstrations all throughout this city in large numbers. They thought that our demonstration would be small. But they said ain't no power like the power of the people and the power of the people don't stop. 
Move consistently setting an example. That's why the people was out there. Move has consistently been denied by the media to tell the truth about what's going on. People got to understand why would they cover everybody else in a good way and when it came to the move demonstration, when I saw it on TV, it was just a few people. They never showed the entire demonstration. I just want to say, has black lives ever matter? No, and it don't matter today. But we can make it matter. Get on the move, stay on the move, never give up, long live John Africa, and long live the power that has been instilled in my brothers and sisters to stay here. After we talk about the 41 and the 42 years that they did in jail, but people got to remember, there was a whole year that they was in the blockade when they cut off the food, the water, you know, tried to kill every man, woman, and child long before. It was in August 8th. A move is still sitting here, still consistent, still on the front line. I'm saying that is something to be admired. And uh, this is something to example. On the move and long live John Abbott. Power to pull all things together right. and make it move. My name is Eddie Africa. Uh, Delbert is my brother. And. Too many, too many of my family members have been taken. But they need to understand, each time they do this, it gets, we get stronger. You know what I mean? We're not giving up. And we're not going nowhere. When we tell people, you got to open your eyes. Because it ain't just food. It's all of us. Black, white, Spanish makes no difference. Now, black people catch it the most. I've had my ass whipped so many times it, it, it became normal. You know what I mean? But I've not given up. I'm going to fight until the day I go in that dirt. And when I get in that dirt, I'm going to still be fighting. So I want y'all to understand self-defense is natural. It's instinctive. So defend yourself. Yes. On the move. On the move. That's right. Defend yourself. I guess people will have questions. I have to say this one thing here, okay? As I said earlier, we're all here for one reason. Speaking about our brother, Delbert Africa, that we all love. And we will. We will always love. It's a love that cannot be broken. John Africa instilled that in each and every move member. The same as with Merle Africa, the same as with Phil Africa who this system snatched away from us. Simply because we dared to stand up against this sick, retarded, rotten, corrupt, foul, debased, degenerate system. Because we did not back the fuck down. That's why they attack move. That's why they put my brothers and sisters in jail for 40, 41, 42 years. That's why they dropped the bomb on my family, because we spoke the truth. You know, more people have been in and out of the court system since the early 70s. When we go to court, I don't know if you know this, they tell you to put your hand in the Bible. Well, that's not our belief. Our belief is John Africa. Our religion is life. They ask you, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? We tell them, unless you are asking me to believe in that which is believable, have faith in that which is faithful, trust in that which is trustworthy, you are not asking me to be rational, nor are you being rational. Our belief is non-compromising to the inception of this insane strangulation. That's what we are taught by John Africa. And for that is why we were targeted by this system. Long live John Africa.
Um, can any of you speak about how what's been going on at the Columbus statue in Marconi Plaza? How does that connect to the history of the persecution of your group? Well, all I can say is that people are demonstrating and they're tired of the lies. Columbus did not found this country and people are tired of it. Just like they're tired of the Confederate soldier statue all over this country. People ain't trying to hear that anymore. They know what the Confederacy is, especially black people. Know what the Confederacy was. So, you know, we, we don't care about these statues being torn down. Since there's no statute of limitations on murder, should there be murder charges brought against the city officials responsible for May 13th, 1985? We tried to bring uh, charges, uh, Betsy. Uh, in fact, lawyer uh, Michael Cord and Leon Williams uh, wrote up a murder complaint against the city, and it was Lynn Abraham that didn't accept it. She was DA then, district attorney, and she would not accept that complaint. But like I said, when the cop was killed on August 8th, nine of my family members were charged with it and went to prison for 42 years. And then when they murdered our family, 11 of our mole members, none of them spent one day in jail. None of them ever had to answer for anything they do. You know, why is it right? Or why do people accept the fact that when cops are wrong and you take up arms, take up against a defense against them, you're seen as criminal. You're seen as wrong. But when they do it, and take up arms against us, stand against us, brutalize us, is seen as right. That's because this system teach people to accept that. But people are saying, no, we are not accepting it. If it's right for you to defend what's wrong, then it's right for me to defend what's wrong too. And we've been defending wrong as long as I've been in this organization. And we want people to understand that what you see out there today, people have had it. They are sick and tired of it. And you know what happens when you get frustrated, when you get in a position where you are beat down so bad and there's nobody there to help you, nobody to come to your aid, nobody to believe you. Every time you go in front of a courtroom, the judge sides with the police officer and you know that you're right. Try to take a badge number off a police officer and they'll beat you in the head. You know, people are fed up with it. Justice is supposed to mean balance. And there is no balance in the system. Everybody can look around and see that there is none. This is the fight that people are out there doing now. You know, the fight, the position that Moves took, dropping a bomb, going to prison, having our babies murdered. John Africa told us to explain to people that we committed our lives to this revolution. And the position, the stand that we took, is an insurance policy on all our brothers, all our sisters, and all our kids, so they don't have to go through the same thing that Mo went through. You know, and we are committed to that, y'all. We have committed our lives to that. And people appreciate that. And we appreciate y'all because most people came home. We came home through the support of our family and the support of the people. Y'all was out there pushing the pavement, you know, demonstrating, protesting for our release because y'all know it was unjust. And we appreciate all that. Like I said, solidarity is unity. We got to stick together, y'all. We got to fight, y'all, because if we don't, they will just annihilate our race totally. And they've been trying to do that for a long time. A long time. You know? So everybody, just stay strong and know that you're appreciated. Even there's a lot of people here that can't get out in the streets because they have children or they have jobs or whatever. And move is saying, do whatever you can. You don't have to get out there in the street, but you can 
make an effort to do something to help in the cause. Come in like this. It's something. You know, your presence, where they need it, is something. Because we're not going to get there without everybody coming together. And as far as Delver, last night, when he said on the move and he passed, he was calm. His face was soft. We whispered gently in his ear that we love him. We said, no, don't worry about nothing. Mama got you. And there's nothing more powerful than Mama. The air, the trees, the water, the soil. You know, they, they, they might have the armies, they might have the navies, they might have the marines, but them, they couldn't live without the force that we believe in. They couldn't live without the air. They couldn't live without the water. They couldn't live without the soil. This is moved belief. And even though we've had to suffer some atrocities and go through a lot of things, we will never give up. You know, we will teach our children never to give up. And don't y'all ever give up either, because I know the majority of people here have suffered in the hands of the system in one way or another. You've lost somebody you love. You've been arrested. You know someone has been arrested. You know, y'all know what I'm talking about. You might not have experienced a bomb, 41 years in jail, having your kids murdered, but you have experienced something that the system has caused you pain, grief, and suffering. And what John F. could teach us is that understand yourself. Excuse me. <clears throat> understand in order to have the peace that we want, we have to have revolution. And when I say revolution, I'm not talking about guns. I'm not talking about bombs. I'm talking about, first of all, the revolution of stuff. To understand how you gotta be to get there first because if your mind ain't there, your body ain't gonna get there. Understand what it is, how the system has trained people to believe a certain way. And step away from it. We what is right, what is natural, what is healthy for you. And <coughs> I know that Gilbert, if he was here right now, he'd be talking that Chicago. <laughs> that Chicago, you know how they were talking about that, uh, that Southern side, yeah, brother. <laughs> I know he'd be saying the same thing and, and appreciating all of y'all and loving all of y'all and giving respects to John F. because that's how we are. So all you know, just stay strong, you know, believe in this movement because look what's happening. You see a difference, you see a change, and that's what's saying one step at a time. It took them hundreds and hundreds of years to get where they are now. It's not going to happen overnight. You know what it is? It's like that termite that comes through that piece of wood. When the termite is coming through that wood, you can't see it. But once it gets through, there it is. <laughs> and that's what's happening right now. So everybody, just do the best you can. You know, stick together. Show some love, show some unity, and know that we will always be here. You know, we might not see it out in certain places, but you know, we send statements. Know that our presence and our influence is there. Okay, y'all. On the move, we love y'all. I just want to say, you know, this is really hard for us, and so. I think we should wrap this up because, yeah, we're strong, but like Consuela said, we just lost somebody we loved a whole lot. And there's really no need for a lot of examples because y'all see it every day. Y'all didn't have no problem in believing that Darber is dead. I passed on because of what prison officials this government has done to him. You see it every day. We watch every day somebody get strangled, shot, killed by the police and they tell you that the cop was acting in accordance with his duty. Yeah. So I know y'all shouldn't have no problem believing that had Delta not been in prison and had not been those officials doing what the government wants them to do, Delta would be with us here today. Yeah, right. And we just want to thank everybody for coming out. But uh, we, we just can't talk about it anymore. We're on the move, Lola, John Afton, and thank everybody.